Welcome to Kevin and Brian's Horror Bulletin Podcast, recorded live in the catacombs beneath your feet. The brightly lit catacombs. They are a little brighter than usual. The vampires are not going to like it. That's going to keep them away. Where each week we cover the latest horror news, shorts, a classic universal horror film, and two creature feature reviews. This week after the news, we'll be talking about the classic Universal Studios film Frankenstein from 1931. Mm. And the more contemporary Here Comes the Devil from 2012. The independent film Leaf Blower Massacre 2. Mm -hmm. And the more modern film, well, last year, Ghost Stories. Turn up the volume and lean in close, because here we go. First up, the news. Proving that the Xenomorph Queen is their favorite Disney princess, the Entertainment Empire has officially confirmed that they'll be making more alien movies after their acquisition of 20th Century Fox and the royalties to the franchise that they now own. I approve of this. I wasn't sure, and nobody was sure. It was kind of up in the air. What are they going to do with Alien? Yeah. Well, they're going to do more. They're going to do more. They promise us. But we've got a teaser. We'll link to it in the show notes, and it looks pretty sharp. Mm-hmm. Next, Netflix has a very cool-looking movie showing the beginning on April 10th called The Silence. With the world under attack by deadly creatures who hunt by sound, a teen and her family seek refuge outside the city and encounter a mysterious cult. This kind of sounds familiar. It like kind of does. Bird Box, The Quiet Place. <laughs> or some, Bird Box, some, Meet The Quiet Place. Exactly. But it looks really good. Okay. Yeah, the trailer looks cool. We'll see. Third, EW reports that a steel box edition of Ghostbusters 1 and 2 is coming this summer of 2020 with an incredible amount of extra features, behind-the-scenes footage, clips, outtakes, and things never seen before. Looks like a lot of fun and a very thorough way to revisit the classic comedy horror movies. This is the one with the four women, right? They're pretending that didn't happen. For this edition, anyway. It's it just happen. It's just the classic 1 and 2. Yeah. And 3? Not yet? No, just just two. Someday. Yeah. Hellboy will be blasting into U.S. theaters on April 12th with a fresh installment of The Demonic Hero. And it's said this film will be relying heavily on practical effects, more so than typical nowadays. Fewer CGI effects. They always have some, but a lot of practical effects, and they've got a little teaser that shows some of the practical effects and a brand new trailer. So those are worth checking out, and the movie coming up um, this week, actually. I like yeah. the old ones, but the new one looks like it's going to be pretty good, too. It does, yeah. It looks sharp. Yeah. And last, if you want to get some thrills and chills while helping out a great cause, you can purchase a copy of the upcoming horror short story collection, The Campfire Tales. A group of writers in North Carolina... Where? North Carolina. I can't say it either. <laughs> that C state. A group of writers in Northern California have banded together to put out the collection, with all proceeds going toward wildfire relief in the western communities hit at the end of 2018. The fires are out, but there's still work to do. Advance praise from Jonathan Mayberry, New York Times bestselling author of V Wars and Glimpse, has this to say. Tales for the Campfire is a brilliant collection of creepy tales by horror's hottest voices. Dark, funny, heartbreaking, and bizarre. Highly recommended. And it'll be available on May 2nd. You, you can pre-order pre -order right now. now. Yep, if you can. Okay. And you know, before we get into our movie, I want to make a shout out to a, a Netflix series we watched the other night. We watched it almost entirely all the way through. Mm. Sex, love, and robots. Love, death, and robots. I had it close. <laughs> it's got love, it's got love, death, death, and it's got robots. robots. And yeah, it's got some sex in it too. But it was really good. Yeah. Almost all animated of some form form or another. It all had some animation in it. Yeah. One was live action actors with animation. But it was really good. Uh, it d d definitely not horror. It's much more sci-fi. But if you like sci-fi, which most horror fans do like that a little bit, it's definitely worth your time. Yeah. yeah and there was. was one or two that definitely border on horror. I like the one with the werewolves. Mm-hmm. Werewolves are cool. Yeah, they are. Okay. Yeah. And first up, 
Frankenstein. Frankenstein. 1931, Universal Studios. We're in sound now. We don't have color yet. No. But we're working on it. We're getting there. This one looked, unlike Dracula, that sounded kind of terrible last week with the audio, Frankenstein sounded pretty good. Yeah, Frankenstein yeah. looked pretty good. It was a pretty decent movie overall, quality-wise. And the the iconic Igor, assistant of Dr. Frankenstein, he's named Fritz. Igor came later and kind of became a trope gradually from different spoofs and uh, different other movies. Not there. Well, there was a character, and, but you know, the yeah, hunchback assistant was there. The hunchback, the hunchback there. you know. But no um, Igors. He was Fritz. Yeah. <laughs> I was so surprised by that. I'd never seen Frankenstein all the way through except for just some clips here and there. Well, in the yeah. book, it's Victor Frankenstein and his friend Henry. And he has no assistant. And for some reason, they switched Henry. the names of these two guys in this movie. The, the doctor is Henry Frankenstein, mm -hmm. and the friend is Victor. And why that was relevant, I don't know. And in one version, uh, what was that? Oh, the bride with Sting, the, the creature was named Victor. Hmm. Oh, so, yeah, they... They, they change them up, I guess. I think I've only seen that one once. Yeah, that was really good. It was, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Okay, well, this one has an odd beginning. A man comes on stage and gives us an introduction and a warning about the content. If you're going to be afraid, you should probably leave now. This is a terrifying movie. And this was probably a pretty good illusion back in the days of the classic theaters where it was kind of like a stage. The guy comes out and walking on it, stage. It looks like he's on a stage. And it looks like he's on a stage, yeah, and comes out in case it's too shocking. Okay. You so are warned. Just in <laughs> case you've never seen the movie, and a lot of people haven't because it is really old. It takes place in Germany. There was a lot of stuff in this movie that I thought I had seen. I, I'm sure I have seen it before, but a lot of things I misremembered mm -hmm. because I'm like mm -hmm. com combining all the other old Frankenstein movies in my head. The There's monster himself was not in this all that much. But the actual film starts out at a funeral. The doctor and Fritz wait patiently for the grave to be filled in and left alone. And as soon as it is, they're on it. <laughs> Digging up the body. <laughs> and they also cut down a man who had been hanged earlier. But the man's neck had been broken, so his brain was damaged. They can't use him. Instead, they break into the local medical school and steal a brain. Except yeah. Fritz is a clod. He drops the brain and grabs the one off the shelf that says abnormal. abnormal. And if you've seen Young Frankenstein, Abby Abby normal. normal. It was a thing. It was a thing. Whose brain? Abby. <laughs> Abby who? So Henry writes to Elizabeth, his fiance, and she tells Victor all about it. They go to see Henry's old teacher, who agrees that they do have something to worry about. And they should probably intervene. Yeah, I'll get that. There's some technical things going on the side here. <laughs> they all set off to confront Henry Frankenstein. Meanwhile, Henry and Fritz are working in the lab. They have everything ready, and someone's at the What's, door. What timing? I mean, it's a it's a horrific storm, lightning booming and crashing, and knock, knock. <laughs> he explains that he has taken a brain and transplanted it into a body of his own design. He convinces them to watch... And he proceeds with his experiment. And they do stay and watch. I it's didn't know like that. It's like an happened. audience. Yeah, all three of them. It works. It's alive. Mm -hmm. Victor and Elizabeth go to see the Baron, Henry's father. He's convinced that Henry's got another woman, even though everyone has told him what Henry's really doing. There's and no secrets here. Everybody knows he's dealing with bodies. And that's weird that they would let him believe that. I guess, you know, protecting the old guy or yeah, something. Yeah, can't correct the Baron. Yeah. Meanwhile, Henry and the old professor are examining the creature. When alone, Fritz abuses and torments it. Bad move. Playing with the torches. The creature escapes and kills Fritz, who totally had it coming. Yeah. And they manage to sedate the thing. The monster is really a sympathetic creature in this. He's brought back and you know this horrific process and he's not all there he's brain damaged and it's not his fault he's, he's just misunderstood <laughs> well, you know that's okay, what i thought big, but i got some and, points later he's big and he's monstrous and yeah so they manage to sedate the thing and almost immediately afterwards henry passes out from exhaustion oh i can't take it anymore and just falls over yeah the professor promises henry that he'll destroy the creature but instead the creature turns the tables and kills him. The creature escapes, but for some reason no one seems to notice. Well, because it was out at the castle in the middle of nowhere. 
and nobody bothered to check was. on him. No, no, they just left the monster and the professor there to take care of it. Well, they went and had a, a wedding and a party, and the they're, professor they're didn't show huh, up, and nobody huh, wondered why. The professor's why. not here. Oh, he's just running late. <laughs> It was strange. So later, Henry and Elizabeth get married, and the whole town is celebrating. While this is happening, the creature encounters a little girl, whom he kills accidentally. He then comes to town and attacks attacks Elizabeth, not accidentally. Yeah. The villagers find out about the little girl, and they're out for blood. They track him down, but during the hunt, the creature captures Henry and carries him into an old windmill. The creature throws Frankenstein off the roof. It looks like a fatal fall, but someone says he may actually survive. The villagers then set the windmill on fire, killing the monster. And that's a classic scene that I'd seen before. Yeah, everybody's yeah. seen that. Yeah. Afterwards, the Baron drinks a toast to Henry and Elizabeth, who have both survived and live happily ever after. The end. The or end. No, until Bride of Frankenstein several years later. <sighs> He's same, not dead. Same He's not doctor, dead. Same Dr. Frankenstein <laughs> to do his work again. Okay, so I thought the monster was a confusing mess of a murderer's brain and an innocent child. Well, that's basically what it was. I what remembered was, him you know. as being innocent and a kind of a good guy, but completely misunderstood. Mm. And no, mm. his first reaction in almost every situation is rage. violence and rage. He is a killer at heart. He's not an innocent guy who's just been thrown into a bad situation. He is a monster. I suppose, yeah. Now, Certainly flies into a rage quickly. Very quickly. <clears throat> yeah. It's never clear why the, why the villagers assumed the girl was murdered. No one but the girl and the monster were there. He mm. throws her in the river and she drowns. Nobody sees him. There's no marks on the body. They it's... just assume that he killed the girl. And, and suddenly the entire village is, a, is up in arms. And... Oh, and it was a funny point, too. Uh, when Fritz comes in, uh, he comes running in. The castle has electricity. Clearly, they use electricity yeah, he's to bring got electric the monster lights. back. He, he's, he knows how electricity works, and he's got electric lights in the castle. Fritz comes running in with this huge torch. Like, why? <laughs> Just got, for tormenting monsters. He's got electric lights. Well, he's got this afterwards. torch with, like, creature written well, on the side. Well, it's afterwards so when he realized, because the, he runs in the room with the torch, and the monster freaks out because he doesn't like yeah. fire. And then Fritz, like, you know, and prods him with it. And How does he go? <laughs> just like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Prods so, him with it, you know, because you know, he knows the monster's afraid now. And yeah, it, yeah. That doesn't work out for Fritz. No. And the body count is very low. You got Fritz, the old professor, and the little girl. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And the monster. Uh, but well, he was already, we all know he that was, he comes back, so not so much. Somehow, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you like it? Overall, yeah. I do. How would you say it compares to Dracula? I liked it better. If you could watch one or the other. I'd watch Frankenstein. Frankenstein is better? Okay. Yeah, overall, I think so. Yeah, Dracula was too quiet. It was just one step away from a silent film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was. was a real movie. It had a soundtrack, and the sound was good. Yeah. Yeah, I think Frankenstein was better. Even though More they came out the same year. Yeah. Bela Lugosi was up for the part of Dra Frankenstein... And he refused the part. He turned it down. He said he didn't want to be, I don't remember what, a creature in a rubber mask for the rest of his life. So they took this unknown guy, Boris Karloff, and took a chance on him. And he was such an unknown, <laughs> he wasn't invited to the rap party. <laughs> and later on, he's the only one anybody's heard of. Yeah, he becomes the mummy and you know, more, more Frankensteins. And, yeah. and then he sang the Monster career. Mash years later. No, I don't think that was him singing that. Nah, not that really. was Bill Haley in the comments. Wasn't it? I don't think so. Am I mixing up my rock bands too? Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's a Google for that. There is a Google for that. <laughs> Why don't you Google that while I bring up our next topic that we're going to talk about? Bobby Pickett. Bobby Pickett, really? Yes. Okay. Leaf I did know that once. Leaf Blower Massacre 2. Somebody Boris was, Karloff is not in this movie. No, no. But there is a famous actor in this. The guy who played <laughs> Jason. That's fame. In the first Friday, uh, the first, yeah, first Friday the 13th movie. Now, if you recall in the first Friday the 13th movie, the killer was not really Jason yet. It was Jason's mother. But at the very end, she's floating on the boat and, you know, kind of idyllic. And Jason, rah, up out of the water. The actor that played Jason is in this movie. Now that's a claim to fame. <laughs> that's a... One half second of screen time in a classic. 
But he has a bigger part in this. Yeah, and this one is called The Leaf Blower Massacre. And it started out as a short film in 2012. And then later on, got expanded as a sequel into a more or less full-length movie in 2017. Mm -hmm. So we start out with lingering shots of dying trees with a child playing and leaves falling everywhere. And apparently this traumatized that Apparently that's that something. Cause we then jump We're a little forward. unclear on how that traumatized him, but it did. I think there was blood in the leaves, but we don't know why. Yeah. So then we jump forward 20 years, and a couple leaves a movie, and they're being stalked by a guy in a motorcycle helmet and armed with a leaf blower. He beats the guy's brains out with a leaf blower, and from there, things start getting weird. What'd start you think? getting weird. What'd you think? <laughs> of just the short. Uh, the short seemed a little primitive. It seemed like a, a, a beginning... Which, which I think it is. It is uh, the second one is clearly looked like they'd learned stuff, how to, how to do movies better. A student film, maybe? Yeah. Something, yeah. you know, yeah, just quick, done quick, on the weekend. Yeah. yeah. But then, five years later, they came up with The Leaf Blower Massacre 2. And it's an Which now has a tagline. <laughs> when autumn arrives, no, no one survives. survives. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're serious when you got a tagline. Well, so, there's some brutal effects in it. There are brutal, yeah. some brutal deaths and, yeah. Um, a head exploding when the guy shoves it in the woman's mouth and, poof, you know, leaf blower. It's not very realistic because I don't think leaf blowers have that much pressure, but... Depends on how hard you push them. It was a good effect. and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, the killer from the first movie has a new girl tied to a chair. He slowly pulls the leaf blower down off the wall. He then proceeds to blow her mind. Mm -hmm. A homeless guy goes dumpster diving. And he finds Shavar Jennings, one of the guys who the killer killed in the first film. Well, it didn't really kill him, just dumped him in the dumpster. Well, obviously he survived. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he goes home, Shavar goes home and finds himself having nightmares and hallucinations about the killer. Finally, the cops catch up to him to tell him they've found his fiancé's severed hand. And, oh yeah, he's the prime suspect in the killings. Mm -hmm. From there, the killings start in earnest. And let me tell you... A leaf blower makes a nice round hole when you're impaled with one. A chunk right through, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I thought it was a little slow paced. A Some of these bad. scenes drag on. You could tell they were trying to make a longer movie out of less material. But but it does have decent gore to it. Yeah, yeah. And there is a story built around this silly concept of the first movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah I, again, this is not what you'd call Hollywood quality film. Definitely an indie movie. Handheld cameras and. But praiseworthy for. Yeah. Yeah. It's longer, than, longer and better than we could do. Mm -hmm. Overall, I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. And yeah. we don't have a site where you can buy this. Oh, we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah, yeah. That's in the show notes. Okay. It, it will be. Yeah. Okay. Where do we get it? You'll have a link in the show notes? There will be a link in the show notes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes, they have a website where uh, this is for sale as well as uh, I believe they have a, a film called Dirty Sanchez that's for sale. Yeah. It's, Go online and watch the trailer and for watch, Dirty watch Sanchez. Watch their trailers for all their movies. Yeah, yeah, they're just something. Well, actually, you may not want to watch the trailers if you're thinking of buying them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, uh, leafblowermassacre2.com is the name of the site. And you can buy them there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, found their, I found yeah. their Facebook site, and they didn't have any links. I, yeah, I was thinking it was the studio website, but no, it, it's actually... Okay. Leaf Blower Massacre 2. So the guys who com. made this contacted yeah. us and sent us a DVD, and we yeah, thank we you for that. Yeah, we them through uh, Twitter. And, and if anybody else yeah. else out there is watching or listening and you've got an indie film, we'd love to take a look at it. Yeah. No promises yeah. that we'll review the and thing. check but that one out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it's worth it. Okay, so how about a movie that's not so good? Or oh, maybe that's just my opinion. That would be Here Comes the Devil, I bet. You know? Here comes the devil. Here comes the devil. Yeah, it's not that fun sounding. Okay, so <laughs> when they say it, written yeah. and directed by Adrian Garcia Bogliano and stars 2012. Laura Caro, Francisco Barriero, and Michelle Garcia. One hour and thirty seven minutes. And are you ready for this? Two young women are in bed together having sex. There's a knock at the door. The girl who goes downstairs to answer the door was attacked by a man with a machete and loses her fingers. Just one. Just one? I think just... Okay. But he had a box of fingers. Oh, yeah, big box of He'd fingers. He'd been doing this a while. So later we see the man growling and rolling around on a hill with a whole box of fingers spilled everywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of a gory, it's you kind know, of the that's it's kind of a good thing. That's pretty much the opening. And then the scene changes to two parents out in the middle of the desert in Tijuana 
with a son and daughter in tow. The daughter is having her first period. The kids want to go see a hill, and the parents, Saul and Felix, tell them to come back in 90 minutes. The kids go into the cave on the hill where the parents have sex in the car. Now, at this point, they've had two sex scenes in like 15 minutes of the movie, and we're thinking, is this a softcore porn, or is this a horror movie? <laughs> we got one way... box of fingers and three sex <laughs> what... scenes in the first 20 minutes. Way more minutes. sex than horror at this point, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, so the kids don't come back, and the parents start to worry. Mm -hmm. When the mother tells the father to go check things out, a local guy tells her that the Indians consider that... A, that the local guy tells her that the Indians consider that a cursed place and that no one should ever go up there. Now he now tells they her tell this. Her, yeah. now, now he says this. Yeah. They were supposed Definitely. to be creatures who think we're nothing more than shelves. They, they take over people and use them. Mm -hmm. Felix returns without the children and they call the cops. The parents argue and fight all night long and the first thing next morning the cops bring the kids back apparently unharmed. They all go home and the parents have makeup sex. Mm-hmm. Another, another. We're 25 minutes in, <laughs> and I'm wondering if this is a horror movie or a porno. Yeah, yeah. We've had three sex scenes and only one pile of severed fingers to show for it. You made a note of that, huh? I did. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting a lot obvious by that point. Yeah. Nothing happens that night, but the next day both kids start acting weird. The mother takes the daughter to the gynecologist and then later to a psychologist. He explains that they've been traumatized, and it'll just take time. It's okay. Mm -hmm. They both drew pictures of where they were, and both pictures have a red truck. The father goes to the police to ask about the red truck, and they explain that a serial killer who collected fingers was seriously wounded and disappeared up on that hill. And he wasn't the only one to go missing. That was that opening scene we saw. Yeah. And the guy disappeared. And that's yeah. how it ties yeah. in. Because yeah. up to this point, I was wondering what that had to do with anything. Yeah. Well, the, the the dad does a little more detective work yeah. and uh, tracks down Lucio, who's the owner of that red truck, who's yeah. a bit of a pervert. You're missing a step, though. Oh, in the well, meantime, yeah, the psychologist yeah. tells the wife yeah. that yeah. there are signs of rape in both of the both of the kids. They find the red truck and the kids go berserk. They're like, "Is that the truck?" And they're like, ah, and they're all you know like freaking out. Is that Lucio? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It was only <laughs> signs of. Rape and the girl. Right. Well, yes, yes. maybe. Her, her her hymen was not intact, the doctor said, which could have been, you know. I mean, Well, that that's what the doctor to, said. The psychologist said it was, there was signs of physical sexual trauma. trauma. Yeah. 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 So it's clear something happened there. Something was up. Yeah. So that night, the parents tracked down the man in the red truck. Mm -hmm. He admits he saw the kids on the hill, and then they find the daughter's bloody panties in the guy's home, and they kill him. Mm -hmm. There's lots of blood. Yeah, they, they yeah. What do you do when you're covered in blood? You take, take a shower, shower which leads together. to another sexy scene. Mm. Not long after, it becomes obvious that the children are possessed and the police are on the parents for murder. Oh, and the psychologists now suggest that the two children are having sex with each other, mm -hmm. brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Incest is best. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it gets strange from there and we're not going to have spoilers. But there's a twist ending. Sort of. Sort of. You can kind of yeah. see it coming. Yeah. So what'd you think? Halfway through, I started to feel like, boy, this is taking too long. I didn't know where it was going for sure, but at that point, I was kind of feeling a little bit bored with it. Just a little. Yeah. Um, the first half, I thought, was interesting and weird enough that it moved along, or maybe, you know, a little more than half. But a good hour into it, I was thinking, how many more hours is there to go? <laughs> too many sex scenes, <clears throat> not enough death. Yeah. 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 So the cinematography feels like a low-budget indie film. Well, it felt like a 70s movie. It, and I noticed a lot of reviewers... These guys did a better job in a lot of, a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it felt like a 70s yeah. film. Mm -hmm. And the, it's a Mexican film with English dubbing, and the dubbing was atrocious. The dubbing is very European. There was a lot of times that people were talking and their mouth was not moving at all. Yeah, that too. I mean, there's always, the you know, the yeah. whole, you know, oh, Chinese sink, movie yeah. thing. But this, no, they weren't even moving their mouths. But the dubbing, a very precise, upper class way of speaking. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the least bit of yeah or, you know, or anything. It was, Formal. Yes. You know this. You know, it was very precise. And I very, didn't notice that. Yeah. It didn't match. Hmm. People who were, you know, obviously in Mexico. Yeah, I and thought they was... weren't. They weren't low class people necessarily, but there wasn't any slang or contractions, or it was just a very precise 
upper crust European people. And I thought the teenage girl sounded like an older person, you know, talking really high, so she sounds like a little girl. Maybe. It just sounded very fake. Yeah. Okay, it's all very long, and there isn't enough demonic stuff to be worth a time investment. The ending wasn't worth the build-up. I hear ice cream outside. I don't know if you can hear that. Ice cream truck. We really need to go down into the catacombs (laughs) next time. (laughs) It's really funny. There's this ice cream truck goes zooming through our neighborhood. If you want ice cream, you better hear that that tune <laughs> and grab your money and run out to the street because by the time you get out there, he's gone down the street. <laughs> I think he's aiming for the corners. We're not on the yeah, corner. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, he probably pauses at certain points. Okay, and our last movie this week is a newish one, Ghost Stories from 2018. Directed by Jeremy Dyson, starring Andy Nyman, Martin Freeman, and Alex Lothar. It's also an hour and 37 minutes. Coincidentally, exactly. Coincidentally. As long. It didn't seem as long, though. And yet again, this movie has a tagline. The brain sees what it wants to see. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the movie starts with a popular UK psychic on stage in front of a crowd. The whole show is an elaborate setup to prove this guy's a fake. And this is all based on a true story. This actually happened with The Amazing Randy. It's kind of an interesting little trivia story. Mm -hmm. It's all shown to be fake, and Professor Goodman tells us that there's no afterlife, no such thing as ghosts, and it's his mission in life to prove that they're all fake. He's made a career out of debunking. Yep, he's the debunker. So he gets a package from his inspiration, a man who spent his life proving hoaxes, but has disappeared himself. He goes to see the man... And the man gives him three cases that he couldn't solve. He believes in the supernatural now, and he needs to be told that he's wrong. We then follow the professor around as he investigates the three cases. Case one, case two, case three. We're even introduced with the names. First case is Tony Matthews, (coughs) a man whose daughter is in a strange coma state. He was a night watchman in in a former women's mental hospital. It's a normal night until it's not. He starts seeing and hearing little girls in the dark. Power goes out, mannequins come into life. He's got quite a horror story to tell. Second, Simon Rifkin is a teenager who is driving late at night without a license. He hits something in the road that looks like the devil. Here comes the devil. Here comes the devil. And from there, things go downhill. Mm Mm-hmm. Car stalls out. (laughs) Yeah. Hilarity ensues. Third, Mike Priddle, a former stockbroker and his wife... We're expecting a baby, but we're encountering, prob- encountering problems with the pregnancy. While his wife was staying at the hospital, he starts seeing a ghost. A very angry ghost. Mm-hmm. And, of course, these three stories are intertwined with some drama that involves the professor's own past. What do you think? Overall, I give it a thumbs up. But... Go on. I don't know how to, much, how, how, how to talk about it without giving spoilers. You did not like the ending. Nice. You didn't. Li- in I the end, all four stories I tie together. Yeah, it ties everything together. But he didn't like it. I didn't like it. I wasn't satisfied with the ending. It failed to satisfy me. I thought. But the I'm end- not going to spoil it because you can't. No, you it, can't spoil it. Yeah, yeah. You just don't want it. You I thought the very last little twisty ending was a little lame, but I liked all four stories. And I kind of liked it a lot. No point did it drag. No, everything was paced out really well. The stories were short, short, tight, and they all fit together well. I thought Mm -hmm. there just aren't enough good anthology movies anymore. It's like those have gone out of style. Yeah, I I can't remember what the last. You know, you got things like uh, Creep Show and stuff like that. Uh You just don't get that much anymore. Yeah. So this had a touch of that, but. Yeah, the ending didn't satisfy me. Yeah, well, I'd much yeah. rather see a handful of good short stories than something like the, well, uh, here comes the devil. Here comes the devil, for A instance. little bit of something that drags out for two hours and didn't need to. Mm-hmm. You like short stories? I do. Short anthology stories? Do you know of any, any, the, oh, look what you got here. <laughs> Where did those come from? Tales to make you shiver. <laughs> Is that so? Written by <laughs> us. Each one has 13 short horror tales. Uh, everything from zombies to monsters to ghosts to ghouls. Some are even science fiction horror. Pick it up paperback, ebook, Amazon, or wherever good books are sold. We weren't expecting that, were you? Tales to make you shiver. Okay. Volume one and two. Oh, yeah, I guess the name wouldn't hurt, would it? 
Tales to Make a Shiver, Volume 1. Volume 2. Volume 2. Each one has 13 tales. And look at that. It's got our picture on the back. Mm -hmm. We are talented. <laughs> we'll leave that to you to decide. <laughs> Some would say we are. <laughs> Some would probably say we're... <laughs> you guys can't even make a video, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the sun must be coming up. Sure looks like the sun's coming up. As yeah. bright as it is in here. <laughs> the vampires are starting to shuffle back in for the day. We need to get going so they can catch some sleep. Thanks for joining us. Stop in during the week at www.horrorbulletin.com for news and horror updates, to comment on this podcast, or contact us. Or if you're watching on the video feed, right down below, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe because this is the first episode of Horror Bulletin Video, and we're going to have more. Did you mention Twitter? We're on Twitter, too. At Horror, At Horror Bulletin. Bulletin. Yes. Yeah. I'm All Brian. Fun stuff there. I'm Kevin. And we'll see you next week. See ya.